I have my 128 and a half inch line chopped and every eight inches across there and I have these marked every eight inches I nailed it well I need to extend that over there um, but I don't you don't need to nail these I just need to pull a line from the from the nail over the crow's foot to make that mark. I have my 128 and a half inch line chopped and every eight inches across there and I have these marked every eight inches. I nailed it well. I need to extend that over there. Um, but I don't, you don't need to nail these. I just need to pull a line from the, from the nail over the crow's foot to make that mark. All right, I moved my lines over. It wouldn't hurt to have a half a dozen chalk lines. I only have two. And I'm going to put it right over that crow's foot. And uh, it's interesting to notice that this roof sort of bows in about an inch make that mark and I noticed the mark went a bit to the left and it's probably because the wind is blowing so I'll put this a little to the right that's better and I'm going to leave these attached I'm going to have to lay this from left to right and that's not going to be the favored way to do it so I'm going to have to leave some room to I, I can't drive that home all right and and this piece see I'm expecting the line to be more into this but it's not it's setting two inches out tack this one in and it, you hang these it's like you hang a picture because it's expected that people are going to walk on these although I don't think many people are going to do much walking on this now so what we have is a certain distance up from the edge of the roof which is going to be it's set back from the fascia almost all the way across so and if, it, if we're lucky, if anything's consistent on these other houses. So this is what? 10 and a half up in there. So we'll go down here and measure and mark 10 and a half from the roof. Right? So there's. There's the roof and ten and a half is here. So now we'll snap some lines from up there. Tack this piece in. And not so hard that we can't get the next piece underneath that. Now, now it's pulling out okay, but I wonder, you know, I think that that.
that little thing may have held the felt up against this to keep the chalk from just coming out willy-nilly. All right, here's the situation as it's unraveling. Uh, I missed recording some of this apron flashing. This apron flashing comes over to here and it extends up the side and I, I need to move so you can see how I did the pan flashing. But we'll look at that in a bit. So here's the big thing to deal with right now is I pulled down 44 inches from the top and you can and, and you can see this is laying on 44 inches but as you come across it's starting to creep up now it's not like I can uh, these are less flexible than I think let's measure this tile make sure it seats 13 and a quarter they're all 13 and a quarter and I can't move them down because of the way it sits on this tile and when it's sitting on that tile I have a three inch head lap and that's what that's what is required a three inch head lap so uh, up from this line is ten and a quarter inches now I could stretch it up you know a tiny amount and it wouldn't affect this three inches but I need to deal with this. I started at the at the eave, and the eave is apparently straight across, horizontal. But the ridge is not. It looks like it's dropping down an inch. So I could keep running up with this, and the middle tile is just going to be an inch different from those that are on the ends which wouldn't be that bad given the choices that I have so what I'm thinking I'm going to do so I, this this situation is just gonna propagate on up the roof I'm going to chalk a line want to have reference lines even if they're not even if there's not working out then you know what's happening see this line is supposed to be a quarter of an inch over onto this tile and it's not it's it's to the left of that that seam now look this one is right on this one is the line is to the left so, uh, I'm going to determine, see there is, the, this is 33 and a half. I'll go down there and chalk a line also at 33 and a half. And we'll see what, see what happens. So we'll just know that this 33 and a half line is, Perpen well, yeah, perpendicular to the ridge. Okay, this is how it's proceeding. There is not a lot of room in being able to slip this tile down so you get a more of an overlap. The way these are made, see this mark here is the three inch. And the factory asks that you have a three inch. So when you set this tile down into this, to the bottom of this, 
there is no way that you can go further further down at least not much now in this so in this case I can a little but a little bit but essentially because of the way this is made you can't just slide them down all that easy I marked a three inch uh, head lap all the way across that's easy measure down three inches and and snap a line then I measured from the ridge down to where this is laying up 24 which is 24 inches I measured down from the ridge down to there 24 inches and look you can see there's still that one inch off so I'm going to elect to go with these headlap lines and just keep an eye on this but this will not be the line that I lay to uh, there these these tile are 13 and a quarter inches and with a three inch headlap you now have <laughs> this odd dimension to deal with since these tile are 10 and a quarter um, to lay up the whole roof you would need to take that into consideration and I tried to make it work out with just 10 inches figuring I could slip it down if I need to well there's no slipping down because of the way these tile set right see so this the top of this matches the top of this tile the bottom of this tile matches the bottom of this tile and that's ends up being right at the three inch headlap like they want you to have um, and these these lines are useful to keep the tile from snaking around okay so this is was going to be an inch but if you notice I can see I can slide that down a little bit there and slide that down a little bit there so I can impact where this line is if you know where the line should be uh, you can move towards it and I'm also noticing that even though it doesn't fall on these lines it does help keep these rows straight so I have now 13 and a half from the ridge down to here so I pulled a line 13 and a half the line below it's 24 and we'll see how this pans out once I get these rows lined up then there's figuring out what to do with the ridge all right I have marked my three inch um, headlap which is required for being waterproof make sure that it's below the nails and uh, factory specs and I marked uh, and so I set these pieces up on the three inch headlap mark and then I measured down three inches and th this is the uh, ridge closure piece and I have it tacked in there with a 16 penny so that'll tell me how long a copper nail I need it's just maybe in a quarter of an inch so it's almost uh, the entire whatever a, like a three inch copper nail to nail those in 
and uh, this does have some adjustment but you still need to cover uh, the three you know have the coverage here so um, water doesn't blow in those nail holes and now we need to see where those ridge caps ridge covers how they s sit on this arrangement before I get too carried away and it is at this point it is possible it you wouldn't want to cut I mean you could cut these off but then this would have to all come down or you could cut the top off and then you would cut let's say we cut this off here what you would do is is cut a notch with the grinder in here and here and then tie it with a uh, copper wire so that's that's how you could make that shorter if you did if you did cut these bottoms off of course then you're gonna have to cut the uh, cut this piece here where it fits together so it would probably be cutting the top down and then notching it so you can tie a copper wire this is the ridge cap an example of one anyway and I have some a 2x4 a 2x6 so 1x4 and we'll see if any of that helps there is actually nothing under this and the 16 penny stick now might be in the way See, if I add a board under there, and there wasn't one before, maybe I can rotate. This, the position of this is better than this. I think this one, this one slipped down. Yeah, that nail's way up underneath there. the ridge is off so I'm for putting it back like it was which is just to sit it on there first we'll just cut the excess off I think it's When I do the tuck pointing, I will finish cutting a relief cut here, fold it over, do it from the back side. For now, we want to seal as much of this as we can.
will pull all that loose mortar out and replace it with fresh tuck But right now I want to get this pan flashing situated so it's up against the wall. Ugh. This is transparent, so my messiness won't won't show so much. And I can pull these these pieces out and finish so now that I know that that's gonna work or close enough to where it's gonna work I'm going to run these these pieces over using a three inch headlamp mark down here all the way across what I'm doing is putting a nail here on the edge of this sheathing because we can't raise these peat we can't let these droop it needs a full the full support of the piece of wood underneath it so i snapped a line and when i did the rotten wood area here i dropped the sheathing down just proud well so the the edge of the one by is sitting on the front of the fascia and now I can't just all of a sudden drop this down because I now know where you set these has something to do with how those things lay up because they hook or, or these somehow stop them so I'm going to continue this line when I get over to this question mark here I'll put a nail in there and I'll shoot the the rest of that line down and we'll put these in now the other thing is a lot of these were eight and an eighth and that caused problems laying that up over there it just didn't go as smooth as I would like and so I'm going to make see this one is exactly eight I measured some of those and there are a little uh, eight and an eighth and I think I put in a number of those over there and that's what threw off the how, how the um, the last barrel came into the wall into the pan flashing so I'm going to insist <laughs> as much as I can that it work out that we end with a whole barrel up against that wall plus the gap of a half inch like we figured and in order to do that I need eight inches and in order to make it all work out these need to all be eight inches and if they're not I'm gonna cut them down see what I mean this is how these interface this already is throwing me beyond this mark so I'm going to need to trim this and uh, this is snail I spotted. Look at that. Beautiful. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that these hit on the 8 inch marks. Alright. So I'm cutting these pieces to 8 inches, which most of them actually are. And um, see this piece is not, this is a dead nail. So I have to silicone it to this one. And silicone works, so use it to 
blew the re-entry ceramic what is it heat shields in the spacecraft so I'm I'm laying up I'm fitting this first row and so far I've had to notch this out here and trim a little off there and now it fits so I'm going to keep going with this 8 inch and see if this problem uh, resolves itself okay so here's here's the second piece see how it interacts with this this is at the 8 inch mark so this if you twist it up a little look it kind of runs into it but you can you can actually pull it down uh, I'm not sure if that's the design because it runs this piece over into the pan here farther um, now I need to make sure that this edge is the same as all the way down and things aren't too going up and down here so I'm going to measure out before I attach this two inches from the fascia at the pan and that's where I believe we set it yes two inches to the front edge. that's in a little far this isn't in far and quite far enough that's good okay so we'll take two inches to the outside edge as the place to set the tile so this row is straight regardless of what this does and I'm not sure if this is supposed to slide past it like this or see I had to notch it off here uh, but so we'll keep going with the eight inches and uh, I'll lay up some more of this and see how this is working out okay so almost without exception this is where this piece fits in here and comes right about like that when I have this measurement now I change it not to two inch to the outside but to to that underside edge so it's two inches that's what it was down there I must have mismeasured so look that that one is a little short even though it's lined up with that okay two inches two inches and put this up with this piece right about even with that like that this is coming in at two inches it's kind of hard because there's nothing under there I had to measure down and with that in place like that make sure this is straight up and down visually now uh, one of the things I'm going to need to figure out By the way, I'm going to have, there, there's knots under there, and I'm going to have to pre-drill those when I get my drill when I go down. Is the chalk line will come to here. Well, where does that line up with, with the tile? So when I pull the line down, it, it meets at the right point. And it turns out, if I look up underneath there, the chalk line will end up right at the crease GoPro stop recording every time I lay up a tile or slate roof there's something new to learn and I maybe have done hundreds of them uh, but I am learning a lot from this one I've never used eave closures before and what one of the things that caught me 
is the eave closures on this right side a couple of them had burrs or were somehow a little wider and i didn't check and so that spread it out and i'm thinking you i have a lot more leeway with a spanish tile roof than i do with uh say a french interlocking at the top and bottom well what Ludovisi has done is supplied us me with a with a quarter of an inch slack it's 13 and a quarter and they're requiring a three inch headlamp so if i want to maintain the three inch headlamp and what i've been doing is chalking across on the face of the tile at the headlap mark now i still have a quarter of an inch but uh if this is done properly this where this cut runs out is exactly three inches from the top and while i could stretch this up a little bit uh that would be the only latitude that i have is to stretch it out there's no shrinking it unless you cut off this angle and then the bottom i imagine you would have to cut that off as well then you can shrink the rows but otherwise there's only stretching and only a quarter of an inch now as far as side to side this is laid up to be eight inches and there's not a whole lot of fudging around maybe you could get an eighth uh, without too much struggling if you if you made these marks like eight and an eighth or so every eight inches you pick up an inch uh, I could see doing that but um, these f fairly simple uh, tile are pretty intricate in the way that they go together in ways that I haven't realized before so most of my work with Spanish tile has been you know working it into the existing or there's been no uh eve eve closures bird stops so uh i have placed the eve closures bird stops down here at eight inches and i'm measuring these uh pull lines marks at eight inches and i don't mean go measure eight inch and a mark an eight inch and a mark i mean pulling and then doing the math so you don't have the air of um there's actually a name for that but an air of addition in each time so there's only you can make a small error every four feet and it's not going to impact really the overall so the other thing is these lines want to come to where this crease is right here now and notice i'm i'm over to the right and i'm over to the right and um that leads to suffering and i managed to work it out and so i'm making marks on the face three inches down so i've got the what the manufacturer wants as far as being watertight is three inches so i've got that piece in um, they don't say anything about the side lap but if you if you vary it from what the eve closures want which is eight inches as long as you don't grab a handful of them that have a little spur or something squished out and you didn't notice it then everything starts to work really well 
Uh, I've noticed that uh, this is maybe a little bit down further on the ridge, but that's not going to be noticeable. Uh, those uh, ridge closures and ridge pieces, see it's, it's twisted, but you, that's just not noticeable from the ground. And uh, with some adjustment, that's gonna work out well. They, um, the ridge pieces are gonna lay right on the shingles. Uh, I don't tend to, there's, there's no nail holes in these ridge pieces. So I, I've never had many of them nailed on. A lot of times they just sit there and I know that they're mortared or roof cemented in, uh, but I like to use GE silicone, what they used on the, the space reentry capsules for gluing on the uh, ceramic heat shields, because it's designed to take up to 550 degrees. It's a really great adhesive. So I use that in, in certain spots to uh, make sure it's little insurance but I've never seen in my 30 40 years of a uh, ridge cap blow off in st. Louis I'm sure it probably has in Florida and other places okay this is it for the day
here's the tile that I'm planning on using. I have stacks of about 10. These tile I broke. And what I'll do with those is cut, cut the barrel off and that will be used up against the chimney. And not only cut the barrel, but we'll have to make some, some cuts there to attach the wire. So they... The tile sits in there more or less perfectly. Once you get it all lined out and worked out. This needs to be three inches down, even though this whole tile is 13 and a quarter. Uh, you would think it, I guess, I don't know what they're thinking, but there's a quarter of an inch. And, and if I follow this protocol, it seems to work out. Now, every once in a while, there will be a little like piece of clay that came out here and is poking out there and you sort of have to tap it off and these these tile aren't when they come out of the kiln they can distort quite a bit so they're perfect these tile are perfectly the same when they go in the kiln and when they come out, they can be distorted considerably. Notice the color variation. See how that's a, I mean, it's kind of purpley, bronzy, and this is sort of red. But if you just sort of look at the roof, you don't notice that unless you actually look for it. And one of the things I don't want to do is make that somehow of a recognizable pattern it needs to remain random so it ends up pretty random the way I take it out of the pile and I put it in the in the lift in, in stacks of 10 See that one's a little more red, rusty, and this one's a little more, I don't know what you call it. Every once in a while I'll miss, and this is what I don't like to do is have to stop and get the nail the nail should be at hand when you're really good while you're hammering while I'm doing this this other hand is getting the nail ready you should see the shinglers nail with their thumbing skills is quite a impressive but i don't do shingles every day i'm not i do enough to be proficient right we did that on the back side and i used a gun so i had the world champion shinglers work with me a pair of, bro of brothers the world's fastest and they did not use their hands they used the nail gun
I'm noticing that this these tile are starting to drop down as I'm running across right we want to keep a consistent as much as possible distance down from the top so there's no noticeable I don't know baby row or change in the row from the top now you can see it's deviating about a half an inch and and tends to get I think it's getting worse as it goes down here now what happened is the fascia I framed the first one by out even with the the fascia down there and then I put the eave closures so that the first tile was two inches and what that did is it dropped this side of the roof down a, a bit I'm surprised it's only a half inch uh, so I measured 13 and a half inches down and chalked a line and that's what it is down here I don't know if you can see but it says 13 and a half probably would have been smart to do a 24 inch line as well so you would make the correction in a couple of iterations rather than all at once but we're not in too bad of a trouble uh, but as I go along if I pull very much far off of that chalk line that's on this row then I'm reducing that three inches and it the manufacturer Ludovici calls for three inches so I need to be aware that I don't want to all of a sudden compromise the three inches just to make sure that this roof comes in uh, pretty at the top it's not likely that someone would notice anything unless there's about two or three inches uh, difference but I just wanted to point that out that I have to keep watching constantly for how the thing is going to turn out in the end and there's no hard and fat fast answers uh, I've never sorry maybe only a couple times before chalked a line on the face of a tile I've done it maybe once or twice on slate I always chalk on the felt uh, but there's no rules that's set in stone when it comes to steep roofing it's whatever gets the job done within the limitations of the manufacturer's specifications such as a three inch headlamp or in the case of slate whatever headlap they specify which is different for each width or exposure